Set. Go. Samsung announces 256 terabyte SSDs and unveils petabyte scaling or PB SSDs. Announcements made at Flash Memory Summit will speed AI development, says Samsung. Ooh. That is insane. Flash memory. So who wants a ridiculously large SSD? So they're going to call it PB SSD for petabyte scaling. 256 terabyte SSD. So at the Flash Memory Summit in California, showing off its latest wares, announcing breakthrough technologies and discussing incredible advancements. Uh, that is... Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. To everybody who has clapped back at me and said, tech, hard drives will live on, SSDs will never replace hard drives, Hard drives will keep getting bigger. They'll keep getting better. They'll keep getting cheaper. Until they won't. Until people go. Here's the thing. At some point, the space, power, and reliability differences between SSDs and hard drives, those 256 terabyte SSDs are going to be hellaciously expensive. Probably. But there's a place for them. Linus did a video a couple years ago about the first 100 terabyte SSD, mm. and it was $40,000. It isn't $40,000 anymore. Mm -mm. And if you consider that space in data centers, okay, let's take a step back for a second. For the enterprise space, think Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, big, huge, complicated buildings. Let's see if I can find a picture of a uh, data center. Picture, picture, Images. Picture. Oh my gosh. You got a few flight simulator maps. Dang, that is a lot of that's a lot of maps. 256 gigs. So Google unveils a new $750 million data center as part of a $9 billion goal. As demand for Google soars, Google is building a new data center in Nebraska as part of its strategy to invest $9.5 billion in data centers offices in 2022. This article yep. is from about a year ago. Yep, last year. See this lovely facility? Holy goodness. These are very large buildings. They cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And if they could get that down. Every square foot of space in a data center costs way more than every square foot of space in your house. It costs money to build. Yep, cool. Provide security. Keep in mind these data centers have barbed wire fences around them. They have armed guards at the gate. They've got 24-7 security at the building. Mm -hmm. Every square foot of the building costs money to physically secure. Correct. It costs money to cool with yep. massive air conditioners. Yep. If you can take three and a half inch hard drives at whatever size and shrink it down to solid state storage, you've now condensed your storage footprint way down. Even if the SSDs cost more, there comes a point at where size, weight, heat, and power Trump. Trump, whatever the, for the price premium the SSDs cost. Do they have an external shot of the building? I was hoping they did. They don't. Huh. Well, that's... I was... Well... Let's see if I can find one really quick. Yeah, the generators that you need to back up. Wow, look at that thing. This is in Northern Virginia, although that's a stock photo. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'll get one, darn it. <laughs> the future of data centers. Here's one. If you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So this is a Google data center. Wow. These are cooling towers. Damn. That is That is cooling to cool that building. Holy smokes. Could you imagine how noisy that is? <laughs> Jesus. So enterprise users are going to stop using hard drives. Consumers are going to stop using hard drives. Who's buying hard drives at this point? Beats the bugger out of me. Well, I'm just making the point to make the point that hard drives... 
I've been saying for years now. Yes. That hard drives are doomed. Yes. Complicated, permanent, rare earth magnets, stepper motors, <gasps> uh, helium sealed cases, and all the complexity that goes into a mechanical spinning drive versus printed sand. Yep. I know which one of those is going to win. So 256 terabyte SSDs are not coming to the consumer anytime soon. Define anytime soon. Next five years. Bet you in 10 years we have them. You think it'll take that long? That size? Yeah, probably. It'll take 10 years. Huh. Okay. But we now have four terabyte premium drives at 200. We do. And it wasn't that long ago that those were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. I am willing to bet you can do, you know, at remind me of this in a year. By the end of 2024. End of next year. We will have eight terabyte SSDs under $200. Okay. All right. Timestamp that. We will have... We are... Let's see. We will have our first $99 4 terabyte SSD. It may not even take that long. 33 minutes in? Okay. It may not even take that long. I'm hedging my bets a little bit. We may have under $500 16 terabyte SSDs Ooh. in less than 18 months. Under five hundred, okay. Under $500. They'll wow. still be premium for a while. Now, some people may hear that and they go, but, but Tech, have you looked at the price of premium eight terabyte drives? Yes, I have. They're currently stupid. There's a hitch in the market at the moment where they're just not dropping the price of those. They are sucking up all of the premium dollars they can. But at some point, they just will stop selling and then the price will fall. Currently, it's like seven or $800 for an eight terabyte premium drive, which is dumb. That doesn't, the, that doesn't compete. No, but there's probably people buying them because... Because? Yeah. They'll, they'll fall at some point. Okay. So, it would have been interesting to be there. Oh. Mm -hmm. From from just a pure geek tech nerd, just learning about all the stuff they're doing, I would have found that interesting. Um, I don't know what else I want to say. Besides... There's so much just... Keep an eye out because it's coming our way. Here's a good one. In the quest for maximum data storage within the power and volume limits of a single server rack, Samsung has created a 256 terabyte SSD. It says that the new device wields the QLC NAND and the highest level of integration density to create these devices. In Samsung's test, the 256 terabyte SSD consumes seven <clears throat> times less power than a stack of eight 32 terabyte SSDs. Reminder, eight by 32 is 256, seven times less power. Wow. Power is money for data yeah. centers, yes, it is. for enterprise users, for the people who will buy these at tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. That'll... The, if you if if enterprise users buy this and they have it deployed for three to five years That's in a data center, mm -hmm. he, and every watt of power in that room, it all basically converts to heat. Yep. Everything, all the power those computers use is heat, which means they have to double the power to run the coolers. How many terabytes are you? So, I'll show you my terabyte. <laughs> HR! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Um. Uh, last but certainly not least, Samsung showcased its latest PB SSD, petabyte scale SSD architecture at the summit. It says that it this takes the form of petabyte scale ultra high capacity solution that provides high scalability by varying the capacity depending on the application. With such a great capacity in a single device, Samsung and partners like Meta are aiming to make PBSSD multi-user friendly. It says the platform made use of technology called flexible data placement, which has been ratified in NVMe. Uh, FDP is a way of optimizing data placement for increased predictability and performance in real-world hyperscale workloads. The software behind FDP is completely open source. Interesting. Flexible data placement. Imagine... A future. Now, this isn't just for enterprises. Do you notice that they're include? This is part of the specification for NVMe. Mm. 
when NVMe 3 or 4 gets ratified, I think we're on NVMe 2 at the moment, when the next generation of NVMe gets implemented, the next generation of motherboards gets implemented, imagine a world in which instead of four or five different SSDs in your computer, you had four or five M.2 slots on your motherboard, mm -hmm. and you could set them up as a virtual drive in Windows, mm. which in five or 10 years might very well be actually Linux with Windows shell on top, because wow. I, I that's another prediction that I've made at some point, Microsoft's gonna ditch the NT kernel and go to, go to Linux, yep. because Linux is said that superior. Um, imagine that you just have storage and you can add storage and where the data is written across various SSDs doesn't matter. And you can tell Windows, I want redundancy, but imagine you could do RAID 1 or redundancy yeah, yeah, yeah. at the folder level instead of drive level. You don't necessarily need Windows or programs. No, yeah, you can be very specific. But on you want people. your My Documents folder to be RAID 1. -ed. So you can right click on your My Documents folder, duplicate, and it makes sure internally that two copies of that data are stored, stored on two different storage devices within your PC. That, how confusing is it for people to have four or five different drives in their computer? Where, where did I download this game to? Yep. Where's my download folder? Where's this folder? Now I know we have more of a tech enthusiast audience Many of you may go, well, I like having my different drives. I can organize my files. I don't need help with that. But with SSDs, you gotta leave a little bit free on each one of them. And then you get, okay, well, you I'm gonna put Blizzard on my D drive and Steam on my E drive and EA Play on my G drive and OneDrive on my H drive. And But then you don't have any flexibility where, oh, I wanna download three or four more games. Oh, well, now I'll put some of them over here and I'll put some and here. Like, but imagine you just had a block of space and you let Windows deal with it. That'd be cool. Once upon a time, we used to manage our memory manually as well. I remember doing with high memsys and putting uh, terminate and stay resident programs in Austin to upper memory manually before MemMaker came out in, uh, well, I had QEMM because doing it manually in, when, in DOS 5 sucked. You could sort yeah. of do it. Sounds complicated. We used to do that. Then we used to set up expanded and extended memory, uh, EMS and XMS manually in the config system auto exec bat files. No, Windows just handles it. You don't care where your stuff is stored in memory, do you? No. Okay. What if we did that to storage? Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, I am not saying this is guaranteed to happen. I'm saying it is possible. possible. They are creating it as an open source solution to be added to the overall NVMe standard. It's interesting, I, but that's probably a five-year thing. That's a ways off. Okay. But it's interesting. All right. Next article. Um, there was a comment in chat I want to address, and it's a fair comment. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. What was it? Nathaniel says, people that still need hard drives of video surveillance systems 
with a lot of cameras, home security systems, movie backups, game backups, you can't fit all of that on SSD. Challenge accepted. My, now, I am not typical, but my new gaming PC at home has 18 terabytes of SSD space in it. And that used to be expensive. It did. It is not anymore. Nope. It's not cheap, but it's really not that much, all things considered. Now, how many movie backups and camera footage do you have? I mean, camera surveillance doesn't actually use that much storage. It does, but it doesn't. It is true that for the moment, hard drives make sense for those applications. For a hot minute. On Prime Day, 8 terabyte Samsung 8 uh, 70 QVOs mm -hmm. worth 300 bucks. Wow. Now that's a QLC drive. It's relatively low performance. Um, but 300 bucks for 8 terabytes is pretty cheap. That is very you cheap. You can currently, right this second, buy a 4 terabyte um, 11 JS600 drive. DRAMless QLC. It's very budget, budget neutral. But you know, it for video, it's fine for $135. So I'm willing to bet that quite a few video applications could fit. I mean, you could just buy between two to four of those and, and have all the storage most people would ever need. Yep. How's that going to work when Windows Storage does a whole 64 terabyte weird thing? They're going to have to change that. 64 terabyte? Or whatever. Oh, it you is. mean Windows Store Spaces? Yeah. Windows Store Spaces is weird. They'll need to come up with something new to handle. Um, because how would you ever? The the storage architecture design of Windows will need to be updated. They'll need to update it so that you can, for example, specify. Imagine not caring where you're. You have ridiculously fast Gen six. NVMe boot drive, mm -hmm. a couple of Gen 5 data drives, yep. some older Gen 4 backup drives, mm -hmm. and maybe you still have one or two mechanical hard drives. And it's all one storage space. Fun fact, um, <clears throat> other OSs besides Windows have been able to do this for a while. Mac has been able to do this for years. So, okay. imagine you could specify folders Imagine like three different colors of in, in in File Explorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could say, by default, programs and stuff on Windows and things installed would all be on the boot drive. Windows would know to put those so on the performance drive. So you're going to happen Windows 13. But imagine you select your your okay. I've got some video files, or your uh, or your uh, cat videos. Ah, uh, yes. You could select those folders, right click them, and choose. Slow storage how, or priority. How long do you think it's going to And then Windows internally puts those files in different places. You, in other words, you, you, you mark which things you need the most or need the most performance of yep. without having to individually manage moving stuff around. You let Windows do it all in the background. How long do you reckon it's going to take before that becomes a thing? Windows 13, Windows 14? Five to ten years. It's going to take that long. Have you met Microsoft? Yeah, they don't move very fast. You want to know what make Microsoft move fast? Competition. Look at what Intel has done because yeah, of AMD. That's true. Thank you, AMD, for kicking Intel in the kush, kush nizzle. 